Hello and welcome back to Teach Me a channel. In this video, I'm going to show you one of the Excel templates which I have designed specifically for risk management. So this would be one of the trackers that would help you to track the risks that are happening in your project. So what you're seeing on the screen right now is the risk management status dashboard. So this is how I have populated all the charts that are being recorded as part of your risk management tracker. <clears throat> so let me walk you through each of the worksheets that will help you to record or monitor or track your risks that would occur in your projects. So this is one of the worksheets where it, it would show you what are the respective states or the status of your risks that you have captured as part of your project and uh, I have basically categorized the risks as risks occurring by likelihood and risks by impact and risks by severity and risks by status. So this is how the charts would be automatically populated once you have recorded all those data which are required for this population. And down here you will see something called as a summary. This is an automatically generated statement which would give you a summarized information of what is the status of your risks. So let's go to the next worksheet to get started with. To get started with this sort of risk management tracker, I would recommend that you first go to the sheet which is mentioned as data. So once you go to the data worksheet, so you would need to fill up certain mandatory details which I have written up here so that you would be able to get started with the Excel sheet with the relevant information that might be required. So one one of the informations that might be required is if you have a specific department or a company that you are using this template for. So I would recommend that you would write your company name and the department and the project that you are using and who is the risk manager for this particular activity. So just to demonstrate, for example, you are also able to see the green peaks here that indicates all of these fields are filled in. So in case just for demonstration purposes, I delete off this first cell, then it would show you a red mark or a red asterisk here just to indicate that this particular field is empty. So once you fill in this particular field, it would be again automatically tick mark. So there are also the different states or the naming conventions that you want to use in form of uh, for likelihood, status, severity, impact. So you could also go and edit these particular uh, cells here and you can fill in the states or the likelihood or severity or impact based on your conventions that you want to use. So once you get started with this, then you need to go to another worksheet where it is mentioned as a risk tracker. So for demonstration purposes, I have filled in some of the risks here until risk 4 that you are able to see here on the screen. And um, whatever you have already filled in in the data worksheet, for example, the project name and the risk manager and the department. So if you see here, all these are automatically filled in in, the, in these rows here. So once those are filled in, so I will just show you one sample example. So how you could be able to fill in all these data for your further usage. So let me tell you what are all of these fields or columns would act upon or would help you to fill in the data particularly. So what you are able to see here something called as if I take up the first column which is a risk ID. So this risk ID column is automatically populated so you don't have to worry anything about it. 
and you need to start filling in from the column reporting date so once you start filling in from the reporting date for example if i just start filling in like this now and next thing is i need to fill in with the risk that i have just for demonstration purposes i'm writing it as risk 5 description and you will see the columns likelihood impact cvrt so these are like the drop down options which you have already filled in from the worksheet data so let me choose from the drop downs i will select the likelihood as low and even the impact also would be low and i will also select the cvrt also to be low so once I fill in these three columns which have the drop down options, then I need to fill in the assignee name. Assignee is someone who actually works upon the risks to bring it to a resolution. So I will just write in another name here called as Achay. And the reporter is the one who actually reports the risk. So I will write the reporter name here. So once this is reported to the assignee from the reporter so this is how all of the data starts getting filled now what would happen is that once the reporter logs this particular risk in the risk register so he needs to select the status so i have uh, given certain status options here one is the open under analysis fixed resolved and closed so since i am being the reporter at this point of time for demonstration so i will select the status as open please also do keep an eye on the columns user and status updated on columns here please do notice the changes once i click on any of the status options here so at this point of time, since I have locked the risk now, I will click on the option or the status as open. Did you see that reflecting in the column the user and status updated on? So this status change, whenever you do a status change, it takes the name of the system who has actually made the system uh, uh, status change so it would reflect his name and also the time when the status was updated so if you see this date it is also picked up from today with a particular time here so that is how you will also be able to track the risks with even the timestamps and also from the one who has actually changed the status as well so what would happen is that in the real scenario so now when the risk reporter has already uh, reported the risk it would be assigned to the assignee who would start working upon it so for instance if the assignee has got this information that this particular risk has been locked then the assignee would change the state as under analysis okay so once if that is uh, moved to under analysis state so correspondingly the user and the status updated column also would get updated and the assignee would also fill in something called as the mitigation plan and also the contingency plan so once these are filled in by the assignee so this is how it would look like and they would further go for implementation and all these state transitions would happen further later on as the way the convention or the process that you would follow so now let me go back and show you once you have filled in all these data whatever is required for your risk registration now for an instance once you have all these data the next course of action would be to notify to the management that what might be the status of the risks that are happening in the project on a regular frequency basis, whatever you might have defined. So now where you will be able to get or fetch all these status. So you need to go back to the status worksheet where the data would get automatically populated here. So you are also able to notice the change 
the state automatically reflected here on all of these charts and also if you see here in the summary section it also automatically populated something called as there are zero critical and two high risks detected one issues have been closed and one issues are still open just for demonstration purposes let me again show you now you are able to see something called as a zero critical here let me move any of the risks to critical state so that's how you will be also be able to see the latest change here uh, which would be reflecting so now let me change the criticality of so i will change the impact as critical and also the severity also as critical for the first risk now let me go back to the status worksheet so this is how it would reflect you are able to see in the summary section here it says there are one critical and one high risk detected so i have also given you the readme section here which would also help you to uh, you know provide you information on the usage of this particular risk tracker so if you have any further inputs to improvise this particular risk management tracker or the risk tracker let me know in the feedbacks or the comment section and feel free to provide me any suggestions for improvement of this risk tracker if you also have any customized requirements please do write back to me at my email id teachmeak at the rate gmail.com thank you for watching and stay tuned for more videos like this thank you